Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about burnout. All right guys, first we're gonna get into, well, what exactly is burnout if you're not completely sure of the definition? Google defines burnout as a state of emotional, physical, or mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. You're super drained and you feel unable to kind of meet the constant demands of maybe your work, maybe it's school, maybe it's a sport you play. We're gonna go through three kind of steps to help you get over burnout. Steps to get you started to help you kind of get over that fourth quarter, end of the year burnout that I know a lot of fellow juniors, seniors, sophomores, freshmen are experiencing. I know that each one of you is capable of working hard, going the extra mile, so we're gonna go over the three R's that I think are the keys to getting over burnout. The first R is recognize. When you're feeling burnt out, you just feel sometimes like you just, you're just like going through the motions, you just kind of feel bleh, you just kind of feel like you've been working forever. You feel like you just can't anymore, you've kind of hit that wall. That is kind of a symptom of burnout. It's important to confront those emotions head on and recognize that you're having a difficult time. Not everyone can take on a lot of responsibilities, a lot of tasks, and feel not feel stressed. It's just impossible, it's a part of human nature to feel stressed and to feel overwhelmed sometimes from all of our expectations, like expectations from our parents, expectations from our peers, expectations from maybe potential colleges you're applying to if you're in high school. Most importantly, expectations you set for yourself. So just realizing that that can be a lot to put onto one person and recognizing that you're kind of struggling and that's okay. I find myself struggling with things a lot and I think it's really just important to just first develop that awareness, realizing that nothing is permanent. Not just saying, oh no, no, like it's fine. like. I'll just, um, I'll drink like two energy drinks. I'll pull another all-nighter. It'll be okay. I'm just kind of tired. I just, I think it's really important to just acknowledge those emotions you're feeling. Even if maybe they're kind of like negative, not good feeling emotions. After you realize, hey, like I'm feeling kind of stressed out right now, reach out to a friend who maybe is feeling a similar way. You can kind of both be like that support for each other and just kind of like talk it out. Like, hey, I'm feeling like this. I don't really know what to do and maybe the other person who kind of understands can kind of help you out and i just have that person just listen to me for a little while because for me when i just like talk to someone literally it just makes me feel so much better and once i kind of like think like okay i'm kind of feeling overwhelmed about this this and this and i kind of list it all out it kind of helps me flesh out like where is like this stress stemming from journal it all out so you can buy like really inexpensive journals from amazon or even literally get like a napkin, a legal pad from your junk drawer, or a post-it, a piece of paper. Maybe set a timer for a few minutes and just kind of think like, what's on my mind right now? And just write everything that you can think of down and then you can start to identify again the things that are on your mind. After you've journaled it out, talked it out with a friend, recognized your emotions, all of those things in step number one, you're ready to move on to step number two. So this next step is kind of consists of a few little changes that you can kind of start implementing into your daily life. So just so your life feels a little more well-rounded because sometimes when you're stressed, it just sucks up all of your energy. It feels like it sucks up all of your time and it feels like the stress is just consuming you. And I have so been there. In this reframe step, it's kind of about like reframing your mindset about your daily activities. I know of course you are not able to kind of hang out with your friends every single day and never have to go to school, never have to do work. Reframe step, it makes every day maybe seemingly mundane activities or things you don't want to do seem more fun. The first tip is kind of saying like instead of you have to do something like, oh I have to get my homework done by like X day you get to get your homework done and I think a lot of times we forget maybe the seemingly boring things in life the seemingly hard things are actually kind of their privileges we think just saying like oh I get to do my homework it's just kind of acknowledging and being like grateful that you're lucky that you're able to be educated because that's gonna allow you to get your dream job 
and that's gonna allow you to get your dream house just making that small like shift in your perspective just saying oh i get to go to practice at 3 30 and i know it won't be possible every day some days you you'll just be focused on getting through the day and you won't have you won't have the capacity to kind of maybe implement all of these tips like it get kind of connotes like you're you're getting a reward you're having a privilege and i'm so privileged to have this camera to film on to have my laptop to edit on i don't know like makeup and jewelry and cute clothes that i can wear when i film grateful that i get to have all these amazing subscribers like you guys on my channel just also just thinking about things in your daily routine that you have to do but you don't necessarily like like let's say you have to go to your french class i'm not in french but to go to french class and maybe you just don't really like French. Instead of saying, oh, I have to go to French next, like blah, 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 that's so annoying. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to go to French. Some people, even if you say, oh, I'm so excited to go to French, and maybe you'll say it in like a happy tone. For some people, maybe that won't work. Maybe your brain won't be fooled that easily. Maybe you'll think, uh, I'm saying this, but it's not really working. And adding a because kind of puts your brain on the alert and kind of says, oh wait, there, there's a reason for this. Oh wait, let, let, let's keep listening. But if you say, oh, I'm so excited to go to French class because I get to learn a new language and on my trip to France next summer, I'll get to speak and act like I'm a local. If you try to think of a reason, you'll find a reason. Even if it's the smallest, littlest, insignificant thing, the final step is the reset. It consists of, again, realizing, yeah, you know, I can't drop three AP classes I know they're the source of my stress because they demand a lot from me. You can't drop those because you've made a commitment to them, which is important to honor your commitments. But maybe you're thinking, you know, I can cut back on my volunteer hours a little bit. I can watch one last episode of Netflix at night. Or, guys, take out your phone right now. I'll wait. If you have an iPhone, go to screen time. Get your screen time for the past week past day, past hour, whatever. I'm gonna guess, if you're a teenager and you're watching this, the screen time is pretty high. And I'm not saying, oh my gosh, you're wasting all your time on your phone, this is ridiculous. No, phones are addictive. I use my phone so much. That's, I mean, phones are just, it's hard to get away from your phone. Just realizing that like, everyone has 24 hours in their day. It's a, it's a given fact. You are, able to spend like 10 less minutes on your phone today start small and spend those 10 minutes instead maybe taking a walk outside spending 10 minutes meditating or something you can just kind of realize i spent like four hours on my phone today wait i could be spending 10 minutes just doing something simple that maybe will help me de-stress and also just kind of finding what will help you de-stress is it taking a bath is it reading a book? It doesn't have to be some crazy workout. It doesn't have to be some crazy like skincare routine. It can be something simple, something that works for you. Realizing life is not made up of just school. It's made up of those little moments where maybe you're laughing with your friends or you see something funny on TV. You're taking a walk outside and you just Look at the sky, it's beautiful and blue after a week straight of being cloudy. Picking your priorities. Right now, guys, pull out a piece of paper. Write down different categories of things that you would like to be able to do. Maybe one category is work. One category is school, running your small business, time with, with friends or family. One category is exercise. And circling or putting a star next to each day, a priority that you're going to focus on. You cannot get it done all in one day. You can't do all your priorities. You're not gonna be able to FaceTime your friend for four hours, but also have time to do a two hour workout and go to school for eight hours and do your job and have time to cook these amazing fancy meals. And if you do have time to do all those things, probably doing them super, super rushed. And it's important to focus on maybe doing a few priorities every day then kind of focusing on doing all of our priorities, but kind of rushed. I also recommend multitasking. Now, I'm not saying you should be cooking your dinner while also FaceTiming your friend, while also listening to music, while also trying to work on your AP paper. 
you're taking a walk and you're calling your friend on FaceTime. I'm saying maybe you're cooking dinner and listening to music. Also, time blocking. Some people feel like time blocking is like, oh my gosh, I'm fitting myself into this little box. I'm like, I gotta get this done this time, this time, this time, this time. And I can be like that too. Time blocking can feel overwhelming. It can feel like this is like you have to do this at this time. But if you use it as a tool and you kind of use it as, okay, here's my to-do list. How long will it realistically take to do this? If I'm time blocking and making sure you're adding in 10 more extra minutes than you think it's gonna take. Okay, so actually, I thought I could only do this, but I can actually do all these things. Or maybe you're thinking, I thought I could do all these things, but I can actually only do this. Maybe if you don't know, just kind of try to make an estimate. If you really have no idea, put 30 minutes. And just set that, just set a timer for 30 minutes and maybe you get half of it done, maybe you get all of it done, maybe you get a quarter of it done. People film Sunday reset videos all the time. But it can be any day of the week, honestly. Pick one day of the week where you remove at least one thing from your to-do list. I'm not saying abandon all your priorities. Take one day a week, remove one thing from your long to-do list, and add in some kind of self-care activity. So maybe the one thing you're removing from your to-do list is making all of these chef quality amazing meals. Maybe if you remove that thing from the list, you eat leftovers that day, or you just make super simple, quick, easy meals, you can add in time to take a hot bath. Whenever I say some kind of self-care activity, insert in your preferred self-care activity. Another example is maybe if on Sunday, you don't go on social media, but you spend that three hours that you would go on social media, FaceTiming your friend, catching up, and maybe while you're doing that, doing your face mask and doing your nails. Example of multitasking. Takeaway I wanna give you guys from this video is it's okay to feel burnt out. Everyone feels burnt out once in a while. Don't ignore it, but instead take some time to reflect, reframe your mindset, and finally take some time to reset. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe, comment down below. I really hope you got some useful tips. All right, bye guys. See you in the next video. So, and I would.